Catlia lions, the Brassavola, the Cyclia, the Catlia, the Prostichia, the Lalia. Have you got that orchid that's been tucked in the corner and forgotten about, just hasn't bloomed for so long, you've lost the tag, you've forgotten what it is, and you just can't get it to bloom. Well, let's help you identify it, and that way we can give it the right cultural requirements again to get all those amazing flowers. Today, we're going to be taking a dive into that deep, dark, dank world of orchid identification. Well, really, we're just going to be dipping our toes into that ocean. Today we're starting off with cattleyas, but we'll be doing a short series to go through each of the different genera to help you find which is your specific orchid. So let's start you off with some of the basics and welcome to the nature company. If this is the kind of information you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and that notification bell to be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing. So let's just take a look at some of these variations one at a time. We can go from these miniatures to these giants. The one leaf is even bigger than the whole plant and this is not even at its full size yet. And the larger cattleyas can grow to fill up huge great big giant pots whereas these in the same time might grow big enough to fill a teacup. So let's take a look at some of the differences in growth forms other than just the size. Other variations that you can easily notice are things like the broad flat leaves or those thin little narrow leaves. And now you're beginning to wonder how am I going to be able to tell the difference when there's such a wide variety. But there's still a few more things to look at before we look at what knits them all together and keeps them all in the same family. And the different forms of pseudobulbs can also become very confusing if you're trying to lump them all together in one category. So here we have these broad fat bulbous ones. We also have these long thin narrow ones. and these extended round tubular ones. So things are just getting more and more confusing, but still there's a way to bring this all together and be able to say, okay, I understand why. Before we get to that, let's look at the different leaf count that we can get on them as well. With cattleyas, there's basically the two variations of leaf count, the unifoliate and the bifoliate. And often with the bifoliate, you'll generally find them on those longer, thinner pseudobulbs. And invariably, the size of the flowers varies considerably to the large flowers that you'll get on the unifoliate ones. They'll generally be a fair size smaller, but you get a larger number of flowers on each flower spike. And also again, while looking at the cattleyas, You'll notice that their leaves are quite stiff, almost cardboardy. They're quite brittle so that they do snap quite easily and they're almost succulenty. So these are also good indicators on helping you identify cattleyas. It doesn't matter what leaf form they have, they generally have that same thick, hard, cardboardy like texture to them. And so if you want to know what I mean by the Catley Alliance, here we just have a few examples. The Brassavola, Encyclia, the Catlia, the Prostichia, the Lalia, the Myrmecophila. Not to be outdone by all those, there's still the Epidendrum. But that's another story altogether. We'll get into that into one of the other of the series. So just for a bit of context, the Myrmecophila was originally called Schomburkia. The Schomburkia was then divided into two, the Myrmecophila and Lalia. So it starts to get even more confusing. But not only that, 
the Lelias, the Brazilian Lelias, were now moved into Catlias. And the other South American Lelias were left as Lelias. So, and just a small note, the Sophronitis, also from Brazil, were all named Catlias as well just to make things easier. And with all of this, it would appear to the layman that the taxonomists are making every effort to obfuscate the identification process by the so-called disambiguation in the renaming of the genera. My nerd coming out. Someone take my soapbox away. I'm not running for public office. And also when taking a look at the roots, you'll notice they're quite thick plump roots, they quite stiff and they tend to be brittle so they'll snap quite easily when working with them. Even on the miniatures if you look down you'll notice the thickness of the roots in compared to the plant itself so they do have quite some volume to them. So now we get to the part that binds it all together. So what we are looking for to help you identify that your orchid is a cattleya is we're looking for this sympodial growth habit which means they sympodial orchids which means they grow laterally from a point and they have these vertical uprights. This bottom stem is known as the rhizome and these uprights are pseudobulbs. This is what stores all the energy for the plant's growth and on top of the pseudobulbs you'll get the leaves and then of course the flower spikes. At the base of the pseudobulbs, at the rhizome, you'll notice these little eyes. These little eyes are the buds that will then produce the new growth going forwards. So these vertical growths, the pseudobulbs, store the plants water and energy for continued growth. And in your cattleya and the cattleya alliance, all of them are fusiform which means they tapered from the bottom and then again at the top. And your roots will always grow off from the bottom half of the rhizome as it grows along. Always being formed from the new growth, the old growth, once their roots are dead and or been removed, they will not grow again. Catalyst flowers are generally the most well-known or at least after Phalaenopsis. Their buds are enclosed by the three sepals one at the top and two at either side facing downwards and then the three petals. The third petal has been adapted to form the lip which generally has a ruffled appearance. This is the general basic adaption of all cattleya flowers. Often they can be scented and they come in a wide variety of different colors. And now that you know whether you've got a cattleya or not you should be able to get your baby to bloom again. Thanks for watching.